Muchachos y muchachas, by now you've probably heard about the lawsuit that Cassie Ventura has filed against P. Diddy. Yes, that's right. His old flame, his old girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, has filed a $30 million lawsuit against him on egregious claims of uh, physical abuse and other types of assault, if you guys uh, catch what I'm talking about here. Now, the details in this lawsuit are pretty dark and there are stomach turning. If you guys are interested in the lawsuit uh, detail, just comment below and we'll, we'll go through that. But today I actually wanted to do a video on some things that I found you know, circulating on the, the, the web that really gives a lot of corroboration and context to a lot of these details should they be found true. And I just wanted to share that with you because this rundown is pretty dark and it's pretty crazy. With that being said, hold on to your butts, secure your wigs, stay right there. We're gonna go through it. All right, so there is a ton to cover here, so we're gonna jump right in, okay? We're gonna start out with the claims uh, that are filed within this lawsuit. I'm just gonna go down the bullet point list here. So Cassie Ventura, who is Sean Combs, otherwise known as P. Diddy or Diddy's old girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, uh, made this lawsuit, and this is what she claims, that he R-worded her in her own home after she tried to leave him. He often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Miss Ventura, resulting in bruises, busted lips, and black eyes and bleeding. Um, that her, She claims that it, he blew up a man's car after he learned that she was romantically interested or he was romantically interested in Miss Ventura, uh, forced Miss Ventura to engage in, you know, what acts with male, you know, what workers while uh, doing things and filming the encounters. And then it says that, uh, that she ran out of his apartment with the, f or ran out of his apartment with the firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby. Okay. So that he did that. Okay. That, that I'm telling you that these are punching claims demanded that v Ms. Ventura, who is Cassie to carry his firearm in her purse, just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is and introduced Cassie to a lifestyle of excess alcohol and substance abuse, required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions, okay? So that is, uh, again, just very slam-packed. We're not going to actually cover a lot of these claims, but there are some corroborations that I do uh, want to point out that have happened over time, and people are resurfacing these things, okay? Now, one thing that I want to uh, definitely point out, and, and I'm, I'm so surprised that nobody, this is not the bigger deal that it is, okay? In the lawsuit, it actually, uh, it actually talks about costumes and lingerie and masks, okay? And we know about, or we suspect this part of Hollywood and the elite having these type of parties, and here it is in the lawsuit. So I was just surprised that nobody talked about it. So this is actually an excerpt from a New York Times article that summarized the lawsuit where it says, a few years into Ms. Ventura's relationship with Mr. Combs, the suit says that she, he began coercing her to engage in a fantasy called voyeurism, which is uh, what she described uh, was a uh, act of something with a succession of male you-know-whats. While Mr. Combs watched, he did things and took pictures and shot video. According to the suit, Mr. Combs called these encounters uh, freak-offs, which involved costumes like masquerade masks and lingerie. They continued for years, taking place at high-end hotels in the USA, okay? A humongous clue there and at his homes, okay? Now, it does say that she procured uh, those type of workers, and um, later on, we're going to go through another detail in regards to that. But I just think that that's crazy, right? We Again, we learn and we hear about these types of parties all of the time going on in Hollywood. There are definitely uh, some clues out here, there, like um, Stanley Kubrick's movie, Eyes Wide Shut. You guys know about that movie. And that's probably one of the most, you know, uh, known examples of this idea of it happening behind closed doors in Hollywood. So anyway, I just, again, like this detail to me is humongous because it it is essentially saying, hey, look, the, they, he had these, he's the one who hosted these parties, right? So part of that, uh, one of my friends, so I posted this on my Instagram story, by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's handle Natalie Denise, that's it. 
I was posting this to my story, a lot of these details, and one of my friends was like, yo, I have a story for you. And I was like, okay, because he read, you know, that part about the, you know, masquerade parties. So my friend Bobby actually told me that he had this random encounter at the airport. He was, uh, it was at at the Las Vegas airport. He was going home to Florida. And he said that he struck up a conversation with a fellow passenger on his his flight because their flight was delayed. And I guess the conversation moved into what they were do what they did, you know, professionally for a living. And the dude that he was talking to claimed that he was a male uh, worker, that that type of worker, right? And that uh, it, it, they they moved into a conversation about him being at a scene one day where he was at. P. Diddy's home and that there was some stuff going on. I'm going to let Bobby, let you hear from Bobby's mouth yourself. We got to talking about what we do and whatnot to pass the time. And he told me that he is a man. Naturally, I was like, dope. I have never met anybody that's a male escort. Tell me everything. He told me that he worked for a company called Cowboys for Angels. And he said that there was actually a show about it on Showtime, a reality show that documented the lives of male escorts. I don't know if he specifically was on the show, but some of the people that he worked with at Cowboys for Angels was on the show. He had told me that he was out there for the weekend, that he was basically spent the weekend with a person that had some money out in Vegas. I think it was an older lady. And I was like, so are you always escorting for like unattractive women or like overweight women or so he was actually like no actually sometimes it's supermodels and super beautiful young women i was like how is that possible so anyways after a few minutes i was like what is the most insane story that you could tell me and he told me about a time that he got hired really late night to go down to star island or south beach i think it was star island in miami for a job He said that this particular job paid quite a bit more money than a standard job of its type did. I don't remember the specifics, but it was something along the lines of like, it was like an hour long job and it was thousands of dollars. And it was like one in the morning, but the money was too good, so he took it. Some of the details are hazy, but basically he said that he got to this huge mansion on Star Island and that the instructions of the job were to not speak at all. And the client was undisclosed, but he said that he could tell whose house it was when he got there. I guess because of either some insignias or some memorabilia around the property. Not sure if it was inside or outside. Maybe it was pictures of him or his family inside. But he said something along the lines of he went into a dark room with a bed in the middle and there was an absolutely stunning, gorgeous, I think he said, I think he referred to as black chick. And he said that while he did the deed with her, there was a man sitting in the corner of the room with a mask on. I believe he said he was pleasuring himself. And he said the guy was Diddy. So considering the salacious details of this lawsuit, now there are some differences because this dude was a white guy. I know that the lawsuit alleges uh, uh, that she was searching for a specific type of guy. I also don't know if this girl specifically, Cassie, was the girl that he was talking about in this story. Now again, I don't know, but this is a very weird story, a very strange chance encounter. I don't know if the girl was the same girl. I know that he had said that the guy was wearing a mask, but he could tell that it was Diddy. He said that he could tell that it was his house. I believe that he has a house down on Star Island. Now this was about... 10 years ago or so. Technically, I could check my records to find specifically when exactly it was. So I don't know if it was this girl. But when I saw this lawsuit, I was like, that's insane because I had that story told to me so many years ago and it seemed to align in at the very least some ways with the details of that lawsuit. So If the allegations against this man are true, he's obviously a scumbag. And, you know, I don't know what, if anything, this story will do, but I suppose it's worth telling. So a lot of people, I just want to pause here because a lot of people are, and I've already seen it on the the internet, like I've already seen it in post and it it just drives me insane. But there are people out there that have nothing they know nothing about coercion, compelling, or about human T-wording or anything like that. But they, of course, it's the internet. They want to put their two cents in saying, you know, why couldn't she have left? She's an adult grown woman. These, I think like, as if the definition of human T-wording doesn't include coercing or compelling, right? 
So I wanted to point this out, and this was covered in the New York Times article, that, um, that you know, she was in his hotel room one time, he fell asleep and she tried to leave the room, but uh, it says Mr. Combs woke up, followed her into the hallway where he threw glass vases out her, sending glass shattering through the corridor. According to the court filing, the hotel security cameras captured the incident, but the suit says that Mr. Combs paid the hotel $50,000 for the footage. So you guys have no idea, you know, if, if this is true, how scary and fear-based coerced she probably was to keep her mouth shut. And the thing is like, besides that, before people were empowered to speak out, right? There were NDAs and things galore that kept victims under wraps not talking about this stuff. I want you to understand that, right? So I'm, I just wanted to graze past that really, really lightly, but just understand that compelling and coercion is not what you think it is, right? It, it is an actual psychological manipulative tactic that a lot of victims feel cornered against the wall by, okay? So it's not as easy as you think. So I wanted to bring up this post, okay? This is uh, Rachel Chandler. She is a fashion, you know, um, socialite and uh, you know she's in the runway industry and all that so anyway this is an old post that was captured that you know she was pictured with diddy and she was 14 years old uh someone did make an inappropriate comment at the bottom so i just wanted to mention that okay so moving forward there is a resurfaced clip of young jock talking about cassie shaving the side of her head. I am going to bleep out some words because it is pretty explicit, but listen to what he has to say about Cassie being requested to shave her head by Diddy. Uh, 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 Scarface, when, when that, that, that white woman was coming down the escalator, yep. and he was in that man's house and he saw that man's wife and was like this. I was watching Puff. The nigga Puff was looking at her. He saw this, this, this white woman it was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. They jumped off the bar, came over and said, yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, so when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cassie. I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm going to do. Okay, so this part right here is... Uh, I mean, like, there's so much to this lawsuit that can go in so many different directions, but there is a claim that P. Diddy blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Cassie. Now, there were some other uh, parts that were reported, or I'm sorry, resurfaced, uh, such as articles claiming that he actually threatened to blow up Kid Cudi's car. So it says here, in one incident described... In the court papers, Cassie says that in early 2012, Diddy grew so angry about her dating Kid Cudi that he said that he was going to blow up the rapper's car. Around that time, the suit says Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. Through a, spokesper a spokeswoman, Kid Cudi confirmed Cassie's account. This is all true. So, I mean, this is it just to peek inside the head of Diddy. Like, if this is all true, this is just crazy. Now, Diddy has restricted all of his comments, um, I guess, since yesterday, which is interesting, right? Former Danity Kane members were actually chiming in. If you guys don't remember uh, a show called Danity Kane, it was on MTV. And this was a reality show that was like, it was sort of like an American idol in a way, but it was like creating the upstart of a band called Danity Kane. And uh, there were members, um, Aubrey O'Day was part of it. And she actually chimed in on her Instagram story. She says right here, and she she kind of uh, quoted the, the news article where it says Cassie accuses ex Sean Diddy Combs of, you know, what an abuse. She comments on it that says, been trying to tell y'all for years, prayers up for this queen, Cassie, right? And there is a clip um, of her on a podcast. Now, I don't know which type of podcast this is. 
uh, I apologize, but I just wanted to play just a tiny clip of her claiming that there were some insinuations made by Diddy to do certain things. Why somebody would want to fire somebody. Can you give us a little? <laughs> um, I wasn't willing to uh, do what was expected of me. Mm. Not talent wise, but in other areas. Mm -hmm. And were other girls doing? I was the only one that was in those types of positions. Wow. When you look back on that, how does that make you feel? You know, I have such a love hate with it all because I don't think I would have been able to be so successful in so many other areas had I not been trained under Diddy. Mm -hmm. He was the hardest person that you can work for looking person. And there was no me too at that time. There was no protecting anyone mm -hmm. at that time. You signed a million NDAs and a million contracts that took away all your rights. So all right. And then another Danity Kane member, Don Richard, actually tweeted uh, this, which showed support for Cassie, saying, praying for Cassie and her family for peace and healing. You are beautiful and brave. Azalea Banks actually posted also to her story. And this is, this is like one of the craziest posts, right? Because it kind of corroborates with the next thing that I'm going to show you. And again, th none of this is like, it should be taken for fact. By the way, none of this be should be taken for fact. These are just little relics on the internet that I found that could corroborate, you know, what this lawsuit is claiming. So anyway, Azalea Banks, she posted this on her story and it says, this is true. One time Diddy beat her up so bad that he sent her on a, Hawa on a vacation, a three week vacation to Hawaii just so no one would see or question how her face got like that. Another violent hip hop, you know what? This is what mental illness looks like for all you armchair psychologists, okay? Now, after I saw that post, I also saw another tweet that mentioned that Cassie actually had like this this gash scar above her eyebrow and she claimed that it was due to like an ATV accident. It reads right here. I remember when Cassie showed up with this scar on her face, all of a sudden she said she fell off an ATV. Do y'all remember this? And again, you can just see the scar right above her brow right there, uh, which is crazy, right? Now, uh, Tasha K, who has a podcast, Unwind with Tasha K, actually uh, took to her podcast, uh, I, I don't know how long ago this was, but it was before the scandal even popped off, where she talked to one of Diddy's ex-girlfriends and she talks about Cassie actually warning her against Diddy. Take a listen to this. You actually met him when he was with Cassie. Yeah. So could you explain to me how this like came to be and what made you stay even though he was with Cassie? What was he telling you? When I first met Puff, I did not find him a i didn't like him like that okay eventually like he grew on me and you knew about cassie yeah okay, okay. now um did cassie know about you is the question she did or uh, she knew about me like four months into the relationship okay and how did you find out about that cassie knowing about you because she um reached out to me Oh, she did? Mm hmm What did she say? Basically, she just said to just leave him alone. Okay. But then, but she reached out to me like a few times after that. And, and she's always, she was never like nasty to me. She didn't call me names or nothing. She was always nice. I don't know if it was fake or not, but she was always nice. Okay. What was your response? To um, she, she told me. Like the last time I spoke to her, um, which was like a couple of years ago, she told me, she was like, she called me at like four in the morning and was like, hey, I just had a dream and I just wanted to call you and um, tell you that I don't have, I don't hate you. I don't have bad, bad, bad blood towards you or anything like that. The next clip is of Jaguar Wright basically uh, going on blast on this podcast talking about you know, a, a bunch of things about, you know, Cassie and refusing money from Diddy is 250,000. She's like, you know, what could have been going on that was so dark that she would refuse this much money if she was in it for the money? Listen to this. What the is going on that 250,000 ain't enough? Ladies? Like the fact that, that, that he 
I'm just saying, fuck the fact that he cut it from 500 to 200. Who the fuck gives a shit? 200K? Who 250K? Who turning down 250K a month? Mm. What the fuck is going on in that relationship that 250K ain't enough? Could see some things. Could see some things. That ain't worth 250K. That's got to be some dark shit. Mm. Like, people are not understanding that that girl quit 250K. Mm. Four million every quarter. Well, I'm sorry, a million every quarter. <laughs> now, she was getting two million a quarter, but then she got, you know, you got going on that's so deep <laughs> that it ain't worth a million a quarter. Mm. They told a story um, about Cassie one time, mm. and she was saying um, someone had asked her why she cut her hair, mm -hmm. and she was like, uh, well, uh, Diddy said he, he just liked it that way. And they said when she answered the question, it was like she was in a trance. <laughs> like she was just like, I just don't know. Diddy just said he would like my hair this way. Mm -hmm. and he, <laughs> it is, they was like so in awe, like how she didn't even have a thought about it. It was just what he wanted. That's how he operates. He has people followed. He has people watched. He does all kinds of so I saw this comment on Twitter that I thought was just uh, worth noting. So uh, this guy right here, Shaw Tired, um, it says the lawsuit is alleging that Diddy ordered Cassie to hire, you know, what workers with big um, certain color some things so he could watch and insisted that he uh, insisted that she wore white nail polish to contrast their black skin. There is so much to unpack here. Now, people are, of course, you know, uh, trying to find as much detail as possible. There are some some photos that are circulating of Cassie around the Internet, but this is just one of them. That is an example of Cassie. I, I, be, I don't know who she's. I can't confirm that that's Diddy that she's sitting next to. I believe it is. Uh, but that's Cassie with white nail polish uh, sitting next to it. So that's just one example. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to do a rundown. If I find more, I will definitely do a part two to this. Um, if you are interested in me reading out the lawsuit in detail, I can do a video on that. So let me know uh, what you would like. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support. So good to be back. Thank you for hitting the share button. And thank you for subscribing if you have not already. We will be back with another video. Bye-bye.